Okay, so I want to talk to you about why I believe in God. People who know me will say, Aaron, you're a scientist. You believe in facts, things that can be demonstrated by the scientific method by designing an experiment that isolates a variable, runs the experiment over and over again and collects the data, does statistical analytics on the data, repeats this experiment all around the world in teams after publishing the methods publicly, and then after long periods of time with the same results, that new truth becomes scientific reality until something supersedes it because science itself is revisionary as new things are learned about phenomena in the world. Let's get something perfectly clear. Your brain is locked inside a skull made of bone surrounded by cerebral spinal fluid, kind of like it's floating in a bath, light proof, sound suppressing. Sound waves can't get in there. Jawbone makes these earpieces that use bone conduction from your jawbone attachment point there. The point is you collect sensory data from electrical impulses from the fovea in the retina of the eye from cones, which are specialized cells that register red, green, and blue colors of light in the electrodynamic spectrum, namely between 390 and about 650 nanometers of wavelength. Okay. Now, there are tetrachromatic people who have a separate yellow pixel, about 9% of women primarily who tend to be artists or into the arts, uh, have the ability to see yellow as a distinctive separate signal, so they get four channels of color, where everyone else gets three channels of color. All right, well, those colors from light, from artificial lights or the sun, those photons, whether they're from light, those photon packets and waves, they strike surfaces, and then the color you see is what's reflected, not the actual color of the, the material. That's different. That's what's being absorbed. What you're seeing is the color that it reflects. In light, colors are additive. So if you have a blue light and a red light, they're going to combine and make kind of a fuchsia color or pink or purple. Okay, in color, it's subtractive. So blue and green make yellow or yellow and blue make green. Um, in light, it's additive. In print and pigments, it's subtractive or blending or mixing or whatever. All right. When you hear sound, what is sound? Sound is pressure waves in air molecules that literally enter your ear canal and vibrate the tympanic membrane inside your ear, which touches a bone structure that's connected to a nerve impulse the same method that the cochlear implant sends impulses, it bypasses this whole mechanism so deaf people can hear. Okay, so your brain generates electrical impulses from air pressure. How do you speak? Your brain sends muscle commands to your diaphragm to breathe out and your vocal cords, how to constrict them, and then your mouth to adjust your lips and your tongue and the roof of your mouth and your how you articulate and blow air while you're moving your mouth around, okay? That produces sound waves in the air that other people can hear. My phone has a microphone that acts like the ear and a camera sensor that acts like the eye. It's taking that data and then summarizing it in special formats to conserve data so that it can be uploaded to the YouTube channel, which further summarizes it for data optimization. Okay, so taking all that into account, your brain then takes signals from your eyes and ears and proprioception from your heat and touch pressure and all of this from your joints for balance, from your inner ear and so forth. And then it tries to make sense of the world and it tries to predict how things are working and how things work and how things go together and how things are related and how you relate to everything. You can really figure this out by watching small children go from being a baby to being an adult and all the different stages of cognitive development. And then head injuries to um, adults illustrate how brain damage creates cognizant, cognitive executive functional damage or their consciousness is altered by brain damage. So somehow consciousness and the mind and the brain's health are related. Now in medicine, there is a firmly established concept called the mind-body connection, such that if you have a neurotic, stressed out mind, you're probably going to have digestive problems and liquid poop and diarrhea and irritable bowel syndrome. Because if you're in a chronic state of stress, histamine will be chronically elevated, cortisol will be chronically elevated, a whole bunch of other things that I don't know about in medicine and physiology are changed by chronic stress. 
and this creates uh, irritable lining in your gastric system. Your body tries to achieve homeostasis and then secretes extra mucus. This will come out of your butt and ask me how I know. All right, now taking all of that into account, if I believe in medicine, physiology, science, and technology, how can I believe in God? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Of all the agnostic people and atheist people that I know, they all have an intrinsic sense that there's something else. There has to be something else. Now, we can know from science, like from um, electron microscopes and space telescopes and even infrared viewers from FLIR or the SEEK thermal sensor that I plug into my phone that now enables visualization of heat by its micro bolimeter array. You know, it's not very high resolution, but it allows the phone to visualize heat, which is pretty cool. Well, the military uses that to see troop movements in the dark. It can see through fog and it gives these little uh, drones and, and um, surveillance drones the ability to see through rain and fog in the dark 24 hours a day. Forward-looking infrared, that's what FLIR stands for, forward-looking infrared. The company FLIR is an acronym to forward-looking infrared, means the sensor array is facing forward and, and sees infrared phonons, not, or heat phonons, not, heat, not light photons. CMOS camera sensors and CCDs see visible frequencies. They're designed to see visible frequencies and to operate roughly similar to the way the eye works. And then the screen that you're viewing this on is designed to reproduce colors in the way that the eye works because that system between recording video and displaying it is designed to work with our visual system so we can see and make sense of what the video is saying. Okay? Now, where does God fit into all of this? Well, God existed before everything else and God will exist after everything else. We know that the sun will eventually burn out and boil the oceans off of the earth. Everything's temporary. This phone that I'm recording this on will break down. It'll become technologically obsolescent after I, or before I replace it. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of these things that, I mean, I can't exactly say when I'm going to get a new one, but I'll eventually get a new one. This one will eventually fail to work. Nobody's smartphone lasts 40 years. Everybody knows that. Smartphones maybe go five or six years if you milk them, change the battery, if you avoid dropping and breaking it. I put a glass screen protector, a protector over my camera lenses, a, a, a polymer protector over the phone case, a bunch of furniture dots all over it. I've ruggedized it, okay, roughly, not extremely. Prolong its life in case I finger fumble it because sometimes I drop it, okay. Well, <clears throat> if God existed before and continues to exist, and is effectively the master clockmaker, then I'm going to just say it. I know the wind exists because I see what the wind does in tornadoes and hurricanes and even just winter storms. I can see the effect on the trees and I can hear it. I can feel it against my skin. I know that wind exists even though I can't see it because I can experience it. Okay? Now someone would say, you can feel the heat of the sun, but you can't see the heat of the sun. You see the light from the sun, but you can feel the heat on your skin. In fact, it'll burn your skin, the ultraviolet part will, if you stand in the sunlight long enough, especially if you have fair skin, like I do. Okay, so we know that there's signals in the world. We can't see radio waves, but we can turn on a radio and listen to them, ham radio, FM radio, AM radio. We know they're there, even though you can't see them. We know that uh, microwaves exist. You can use a microwave oven. You don't see the light inside the microwave. Well, you see light inside the microwave from the little incandescent tungsten filament bulb, but you don't see the microwaves. Those are invisible, okay? They're like 2.45 gigahertz. We don't see that frequency, okay? So the little holes that are in the screen in the front are smaller than the wavelength. So the microwave can't come out, although it does have a lot of EMF because of the transformer. So there is a science that says when you turn it on, get six to eight feet away. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You know, um, eating Teflon is probably more dangerous than standing near your microwave. Though don't microwave food in plastic because it'll off gas into your food. You know, use ceramic or glass. Chemists use borosilicate glassware or lab glassware because it's inert. It doesn't react with the stuff they're cooking. Okay, you can do the same at home. A lot of people use glass in the oven and they bake you know, casseroles and stuff and other dishes in glass. Well, you can use some glass on your cooktop. It just has to be thicker and resistant to the temperature swing. Uh, bor thick borosilicate works really well for that, for, for temperature shock resistance when you're adding cold stuff to a hot pan. A lot of this ceramic cookware, you know, it's silk, it's sand baked into the surface with titanium dioxide and other 
oxide pigments. We don't really know. We know that the PFOA and the PTFE is poisonous, especially if you scratch it with a metal tool and, it, and the little pieces of forever chemical end up in your body. And they know from testing people's bodies that those chemicals are in our body. Well, look, getting back to why do I believe in God? We could talk about technology all day. I believe in God because I can see the effect that faith has on people. And I experienced it myself. I went from being an arrogant, judgmental, hate-filled, bad actor, and I'm not going to say what I did, but I was not a good person, okay? I did not like other people, and I did not like myself. In fact, I hated myself, and I struggled with suicidal depression because of how much I hated myself. So I've gone from that to being optimistic, positive, hopeful, kind, courteous, polite, benevolent, generous, fair, reasonable. I'm less angry now. I'm more reasonable. I'm more down to earth. I can relate to others more. I care about other people, animals, and nature. I care about making a positive difference in the world. Okay? So when I became a Christian in 2021, there was a night and day difference in my personality, my thought life, and my persona shifted. I became a much better person. Now, I'm not, I'm not better than anyone else. I'm just saying I personally saw a magnificent personal transformation, deep transformative interchange in my brain, its structure, its function, my thinking, my outlook. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a much happier person. We can say that. Now, I know sometimes in my YouTube videos, I'm yelling at the camera, you know, partially inspired by uh, Scotty Kilmer, the mechanic. But the thing is, I don't have all the answers. In fact, I have more questions. And, and that's after reading Wikipedia for 80,000 hours, because before I started worshiping God as a Christian through my, through my Savior Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit inspiring me, um, and, and reading the New Testament of the Bible in the Amplified Version every morning for almost two years. Before I became that way, I was a worshiper of information. I was a trafficker of information. I was an idolater of information. I believed that learning more about the world would help me make better decisions that would result in a better outcome. And it did. It helped me fix and repair a lot of things. And I don't know, I saved thousands of dollars that way that I've subsequently spent on eBay, Alibaba, and Amazon. Now, that created Thingiverse. I even have a 3D printer and print things into reality using PLA and PETG. Uh, more lately, I'm using an ultraviolet and infrared laser inscriber to inscribe things. And it can literally write to any known material, though not quickly on like metals. They have to use the UV very slowly. But the, the point is... Um, I'm not here to tell you what to believe. In fact, it says in the word that we, do, we don't believe by evidence of things happening, but by evidence of things that are unseen. So when someone is redeemed to turn away from a life of habitual sin and starts living an honorable life that other people recognize as honorable because they started believing in God, reading the Bible and doing what it says about Christian conduct, you can see the transformation in individuals. Now, that's not a science experiment. We don't treat other people as science experiments for a wide litany of reasons. Even humanitarian ethics, we don't think about people in terms of efficiency the way we think of a car in terms of fuel economy or emissions profile. Okay, we're more gracious towards other people. In fact, most people are good at forgiving other people and really bad at forgiving themselves. So another thing I want to encourage you to do is forgive yourself. Okay, a lot of people have inner unforgiveness, inner bitterness, inner anger. They're dealing with a lot of psychiatric mental illness, problems with depression, fear, uncertainty, doubt, allergies related to that. Well, let it go. Forgive yourself. Forgive other people. Forgiveness is incredibly powerful. You don't have to hold on to this unforgiveness. You don't have to hold on to this unforgiveness. God actually commands that number one, you pray to him, and number two, you accept his forgiveness. He's a very gracious God. He's a very patient God. He became a man who died so that people who call him Lord and Savior can be seen as clean when they die and stand before God and their soul is judged. Okay? That's, it's free. It's the best gift. It's the most amazing gift ever. You just have to believe. 
Now, I'm not telling you what to believe, but I am telling you that if you do believe, you may possibly be granted access to heaven. Your, your name might be in the book of life so that when you die, God says to you, welcome, my beloved son or daughter. Welcome. You don't want him to say, go away, I didn't know you. Okay, because that's what it says he'll say to people who don't call him Lord. And do as he says. Now, it's not about works, it's about belief. So, actually, in Christianity, what makes it special is that you're accepted first. And then, because of that, you decide to make a better life as an honorable, decent person. Because you don't want to offend God. You don't want to... You don't want to remove God's blessing for your life. Every other religion in the world requires works. And then the hope is that if you do all the right things, you might be seen as acceptable to God. But it says in the word that even the most sanctified person is nothing but dirty rags according to God without faith. Okay, so it's faith. Call Christ Jesus your Lord and Savior. Close your eyes right now and pray out loud. Father God, in the name of Christ Jesus, appear to me in my dreams. Con Remove my cold heart of stone and warm up my heart so that I might love you. Appeal to me so that I might stop habitually sinning and become a man or woman of God. You can do that right now. Anybody's free to do it anywhere, in any language, in any country, totally free of cost. All you got to do is say it out loud because the word, as you speak it, the words are incredibly powerful because those waves, they're heard in every other realm. In all the other dimensions, they hear what you say out loud. Those sound pressure waves emanate, they're quantum, it's quantum magnetic effect, and it occurs in the other dimensions, okay? So the, the demons and the angels and other, what you call space aliens and other sentient beings and other celestial systems and other dimensions, all of them hear it. God hears it, Satan hears it, they all hear it. When you speak something out loud, you also hear yourself, so it's recursive. You are becoming what you say about yourself. It's a feedback loop. Your mind is a recursive feedback engine. It predicts, it anticipates, and it feed, it, it's, a it's like a hall of mirrors. In fact, if you listen to music repetitively, the same song, you'll probably hear it in your head for a few days or, or a week or a month, or you'll, it'll occur to you later because it gets encoded by protein synthesis into the structure and function of your brain. Everything that enters your eyes or your ears is somehow encoded into the structure and function of your brain through a process called neuroplasticity. So the neurons that fire together, wire together. So what you read, listen to, watch, who you affiliate with, what you think about, and what you choose to do with your time, what you do, you become more like what you say, more like what you do, more like the people you hang out with, more like what you watch, and more like what you listen to. So be very careful about putting unclean, gross, disgusting, disturbing, violent content in your brain, because somehow, it becomes part of your brain. Okay, so be very careful with your brain and your neck. Your head is the most important part of your body to protect because it has your brain. And we know from brain injuries that if you smack your head hard enough and your skull and your brain collide and it causes tissue damage to your brain, it's not good. Um, from boxing, long-term head injuries, and from football, we know that head injuries cause terrible long-term effects on people. So protect your, your brain. That's why you wear a bicycle helmet when you're riding a bicycle or a motorcycle. You wear a helmet. Okay? You're going to protect your brain above all else. You can live without your hand or your arm or your leg. There are people that live in a power chair who are quadriplegic if their brain works. They can steer the computer with their tongue. Okay? So your brain is more important than any other part of your body. Okay? Well, your heart and your lungs, are, it's because it works with your brain, but your core right? This, this part of your core is the most important part. Your extremities, and think about in, in frostbite, what's the first thing to freeze? Your fingers and your toes, because they're way outside, way away from your heart and your core heat. Your core and your brain and your head are the most important, but your, your brain is the most important organ to protect. That's why if you drink alcohol, drink less and probably don't drink any at all. And if you smoke, whatever you smoke, smoke less because it's not good for your lung tissue and it's probably bad for your brain also. And when you eat food, Eat the whole food plant-based diet with more grains and vegetables because a lot of Americans are getting fat and sick from eating garbage and processed food. And that's just true. Okay, so, you know, use, use your brain. Think, if I'm becoming fatter and sicker every year, there must be a problem. Okay, and if, if food is the largest source of stuff entering the body, I'm, I'm not saying pollutants have a, are, they're, they're, they're as a trace, 
But the, the big stream of stuff in your body is what you drink and eat. Okay, that's going to influence your digestive health. You know, so eat some eat some fermented foods with probiotics and some raw raw natural fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, greens. You know, you, you know you're going to need to introduce more of that to your diet. All these refined processed foods and ultra processed foods are making people sick. In every country that's adopted America's eating patterns and, and American foods, they're becoming fat and sick, namely with type two diabetes, high blood pressure, certain soft tissue cancers, or an elevated risk of them. And, and, and many digestive problems like irritable bowel syndrome. Although we could blame artificial light and sound pollution because that's a stimulant that keeps people awake or causes sleep disorders, including these glowing screens like the one you're watching this video on. So less is more. You don't have to use it all the time, you know, a uh, little bit here and there. I think technology is good when it's sprinkled in and adds value to life and terrible when it consumes you. Okay, so it's called doom scrolling. People literally, they, Watch the war in the Ukraine and the crime locally and all of it's all negative. Well, that's not going to make people feel better if all the, all the information they're putting in is negative. Puts, you know, that's why I read the Bible. It's uplifting, encouraging. It gives me something better to think about. It's super. It's superior to what you see in the news because it encourages you to make better decisions and choices that are honorable to God. And when you're accountable to God, you'll just naturally make better decisions. It's, your brain does this kind of stuff automatically, like a habit. Especially as you continue doing it, you develop healthier lifestyle habits. And those habits are powerful. There's a book about this, The Power of Habits. It, it describes this. You know, I, um, I made a bunch of lifestyle tuning choices to become a healthier, happier person. And you can do the same. Or you don't have to. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Thanks for watching my video.